Hi, I'm Shante from Parenting Special Needs Magazine. In today's live show, we will be discussing crisis communication and the importance of getting communication right. We'll be talking with Kimberly Breen, um, who's going to share many other tips and advice um, from a new ebook that's available to all of us, Helping Our Kids Go Back to School, a practical guide for parents and educators during COVID-19. You know, during this times of crisis, getting communication right is incredibly important. So please welcome Kimberly Breen. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Kimberly Breen. I live in Chicago and I uh, went to school originally. I have degrees in school psychology, school counseling and community counseling. And I do work within the field of positive behavior support. Uh, I also, I have a son who is 11 years old, as you mentioned, who has autism. And he gives me lots of opportunity to practice some of these positive behavior support strategies at home. You're on a team that uh, put together a book. Can you tell, name the title of the ebook that's available for everybody? Sure, yes, thank you so much. So it's Resilience Now for Parents. And you can find that at resiliencenowforparents.org. And it is a free ebook. Uh, I love how you describe that. It's just sort of a collective of individuals most of the folks who have worked on this book come from the field of positive psychology. And I have to say, I'm, I'm still a learner within positive psychology and a fan of it. So I'm really happy to chat with you about some of these strategies today, some of which I learned from this collective group and um, all of which are in this ebook. So really uh, accessible, easy to use strategies, easy to understand for families and for children. And the idea, so, so this collective of people are, is, is uh, international. We have folks um, representing many states in the United States. So I wanna say seven to 10 states, uh, 15 or so cities around the country. And then some folks from Canada and from the UK. And over time, there've been other folks representing um, other parts of the world. And so the group started by just getting together once a month. Uh, to, I think I wanna give encouragement to anyone listening that the group just started thinking like, you know, we have some like minds and we're interested in helping in some way. And we just started to get together and talk. And then over time it evolved into, hey, what's a product we could produce that we could give families that might help them. And then when all of this happened, uh, you know, in about, you know, February and March of this year with COVID, the group thought, well, you know what, all these strategies, there aren't really easy places for families to find. You know, we want them right at the tips of their fingers. So this idea of these quick tips they could use. Right. Uh, so the group just collectively started to, to gather and, and really worked collaboratively. Everyone presented and, and um, put in different tips, different strategies. And uh, the work I mostly did within it was just to share a few real life stories. So I shared how my son and I actually use these strategies in real life. So uh, the book does have, a, I mean, a lot of tips, um, but I wanted to focus today more on the crisis communication. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was really important or it shared a lot of tips that I could see people, families putting in place. Um, you know, as you guys say in the ebook, you know, in times of crisis, uh, getting communication right is so important. Um, but, and like you also mentioned, like not, not very many people have learned proper communication skills. So um, I think that's huge because I know myself like it's a skill I need to develop. So I'm willing to and open to learn. And um, I wanted to learn like, you know, some quick tips. And I also think too that, uh, you know, we've all been in a position before where we are trying to say something nice or, you know, we think that we're being nice or we're giving a compliment and then really we're really offending the other person. So, um, you know, what does a parent need to know? And um, what tips can you recommend that we can learn to improve our skills in communication? So, so know that you're in good company. I think like the human species is still working on improving communication. So, you know, uh, be easy on yourself and that that's for everyone, right? That uh, our children are very forgiving, thank goodness. And uh, sometimes really the, the best thing to do in terms of good communication with our own children is to apologize. I found that, uh, you don't often hear adults, parents apologizing to their children, and yet we expect them to apologize. So mm -hmm. a critical part of good communication is to know that to teach anything, you want to model it. 
And so as parents, we want to model the things we want our children to do, but it's, it's very easy to tell them to do it a different way than we do it, right? Yes, um, of course. <laughs> yeah, I know. You do it. <laughs> right, I know. And then like, you know, we learn through models. And so, uh, so you're right that in the book, there is a, is a part on crisis communication. And, you know, we felt it was really timely to cover that since, you know, so many people feel like they're in one crisis right now or another. And there are so many really that we could name that families are struggling with right now. And this general angst that a lot of our children are feeling and families with how are they going back to school? And that was the idea of going back to school well, you know, how, whether it's virtual, whether it's in person, whether it's a hybrid, how do we get through this? this time that kind of is challenging in as, as a successful way as possible. So a couple quick things around communication and, you know, then again, be easy on yourself because no one really does all of this perfectly because <laughs> we have feelings too, <laughs> right? right? We're stressed out too. And we're trying to help our children when they're stressed. So, so being mindful goes a long way. Now, when you're already, you know, really, uh, escalated. It's, it's very hard to be mindful, but for all of us to just be thinking as you're about to go into a communication with your child, how am I feeling right now? Do I need to take a deep breath before I bring this up? Um, so just kind of being mindful of where you are and even maybe practicing before you go to the door, say it out loud so you can get some feedback and hear your own tone of voice. Are you sound, are you going to be louder than you want to be? Right. We've all done that where it's like we didn't want to yell and it kind of came out sounding like we were yelling. So to just kind of give yourself like that pitch check and choose a good time. So what I found with my son is that often in the moment when something happens that's stressful, it's better to just get through it. And so whether that's me correcting him or moving him away from it, or it, you know, being very brief about the situation, and then we process it later. So later when we're both calmer is when we talk about it. So I think sometimes as parents, we wanna talk about a problem right when it's happening, mm. but probably not the parent or the child is in the right place with their mind to really to even apologize, right? Sometimes we, we force a, an apology too quickly for children and they haven't owned it yet. They haven't thought through what they could have done differently. And so when you think of even if you argue with your spouse, right? Or partners, right. usually we have the argument, we go away and then we come back. And that's when we kind of have our, our wits about us a little bit more. So well, that's just, the way you're supposed to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That doesn't mean that. I don't think I did that last weekend, but hey, <laughs> and I wanted to just mention too, because I think uh, when you were saying that something clicked too. Uh, not only your pitch, but your tone, because yeah. I think I have a, um, I I'm, have a tendency to be nasty, you know, like just to be short and, yeah. or my tone is not nice. So I don't, anyway, but if she picks up on that and then that's not good. And, and my husband does too. They're very sensitive to all that. And I don't mean it, but it's just, Maybe sometimes I mean it, but. <laughs> yes, no, I know what you mean. I think um, for me, I can, I can sound kind of too instructional. You know, I think mm. my son actually has given me feedback. I think sometimes he wants me to be more emotional, which is sort of ironic, but I, you know, I try to handle it very matter of fact, which is one of the suggestions to try to be as objective as possible. Right. But you never, you don't want to come across, like you said, short or cold. And so really, you know, one of the parts in there, the tip is to be, as empathetic as possible and to express that empathy, I'm sorry, this is hard for you. So even if you're disciplining your child, even if you're giving them bad news, even if they did something that bothered you, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want this to be happening this way. I wish it went differently. We can make this better next time. Uh, you know, so I see that you're sad. I'm, you know, I, I'm, so just being very present in that moment and connecting and then using words, right? Like, using words well. And so yeah. we can choose very negative words or we can, you know, we can choose net words that are sort of harsh and imply more of like an all or nothing, or we can use sort of some more open words that leave room. <laughs> yeah. And I love that you guys have a whole section in the um, book about that. Like, you know, choose your words carefully. And uh, so you guys share about some interesting things. Can you tell us about the power of yet? Yeah. So, so, so my son's 11 
Uh, he has autism, which, you know, I know for everyone that means something different. You know, he has a lot of worries. He has, uh, he gets sort of stuck. So like he'll say it's hard for his mind to move forward. He'll get kind of stuck in something and then it's hard for him to be present. He has academic challenges. So I know every child is different and, and he used to have, you know, really, he had very delayed communication, but now has really, really, uh, quite articulate boy now, but it took a while to get there. And so, you know, sometimes we underestimate our children and we do things to them. We use strategies on them or to them, but not with them. And so the thing about language is I would recommend telling your children what you're doing. If you're trying out a new strategy, it's okay to say, I'm really trying to be more mindful when we both get frustrated, right? It doesn't have to be a secret. It doesn't have to be your own thing that you're working on that you don't share, you can, can tell them. And so when we started doing this, this work, when I joined this collective of individuals, it really made me more mindful. And so I started, I told Orion about the power of yet, and I first started using it. And so what that means would be things like, um, instead of saying, we can't go to New York to visit family, we'd say, we can't go yet. But we are going to go to New York to visit family, just not yet. So let's make a plan. When we go, where do you want to go? Who do you want to see? Let's call them and let's talk to them about how we can't wait to come when it's time. And so even something as silly as, you know, your child asks for candy or ice cream, and instead of just saying no, you can say, yes, you can have it, but not yet. You can have it after dinner. You could have it on Friday, right? So to focus on optimism and keeping hope <laughs> involved and then you know a lot of times parents will say i don't want to be the bad guy but yet we're sort of using the bad guy language it's no stop don't <laughs> you right. know you can't and so my son picked on, up on that very quickly and so he'll often say the power of yeah he'll actually use that because uh -huh. i taught it to him right and so um he'll some like the other day i said well give me an example and he said I don't have big muscles yet, you know. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try it because um, I'm going to start trying to implement that because uh, Kaylee right now is, uh, she's very, uh, she was going to go to a hoedown and she's been talking about it for two months and now they've just postponed it. It was supposed to be September 26th. So my child, although she has autism, she is very social and always wants to plan. She should have been at a party. Or maybe she's still going like to her party mom. plan or event plan or whatever. But anyway, so she's very excited about this hoedown. And so she's been asking me every single day, like, you know, who all she can invite, when it's going to be, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, I'm getting to the point that it's like, Ooh. but I think I'll start, start saying it's not yet. It's not till the end of September. So I'm going to, I'm going to take that advice and try it. And I'll let you know. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Awesome. So what about, um, there there was other words in that whole package too yeah. like um and i the other um word that i'm always saying is no i'm busy i'm busy so that struck a chord with me because i'm always like i'm busy i can't do it right now you know and she's like she has learned patience you guys and she has learned to that was a big skill we had to work on like waiting yeah. um but anyways yeah. what about that word yeah. We, we have trigger words too, for sure. And, you know, just like you, so the first thing I'm going to say, I, I would always say I'm busy as well. And, and not just to my son, but just to myself and to my husband in, in life. I'm, I'm so busy, you know, that got away from me because I'm so busy. I'm tired because I'm so busy. Right. And so, you know, your this might sound odd, but your mind is listening to you. Mm. And so what do we want our minds to hear us say? And if we're saying we're busy, 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 then that's sort of telling your mind, oh, I'm tired, I'm drained, right? I've, mm -hmm. I've got, given everything I can. But if you say I'm productive, I'm uh, excited, I have projects going on, right? If you keep mm -hmm. it in the positive, your brain is, is eavesdropping and hearing that. And that's going to give you much more energy back rather than sort of mm -hmm. more draining. And then also our children hear us say that. So I, a few years ago, it dawned on me and I was talking to a colleague. I didn't want my son to, th and I, I love my work. I happen to be, you know, I'm very blessed that I love what I do and I, I enjoy it. And I have lots of colleagues that I'm friends with. And, but yet still I would tell to my son, you know, I can't play. 
I have to work, I have to work. And I felt myself constantly saying, I have to work. And then I didn't want him to think of work as this bad thing. Right, as a negative. And, right, and you know, when you think of the language, I was setting it up that way. So I explained to him what I do for a living and that you know, my job really is to try to help make schools better for children. And I asked him if he agreed that it was okay that I spend my time trying to make schools better for children. And so then sometimes I could say, um, I'm working on this project and I want to be with you, but I also really want to finish it. I'm really excited about finishing this. And so, you know, and I'd say, you know, do I have your permission? Do you agree that I should do this so that other children can be happy at school? And he would always be very empathetic and say, yes, you know, go do that. So, you know, so the words don't only matter for our children hearing them, but they matter for our for ourselves to hear what we say. And the, the waiting, you know, we we used to travel a lot and, and hopefully will again. And so we, we used to be in airports all the time. And you know, when you fly, you're, you're waiting to board the plane and then you're waiting to deplane and then you're waiting for your bags and you're waiting for the shuttle. And so I realized like that just sounds like a horrible, <laughs> that sounds like no fun. And he would get kind of, you know, antsy. And so we were never waiting. We were thumb wrestling. We oh, were doing you know, tasting the candy we got that we're going to eat on the plane. We were making our plan for what we're going to do when we get there. So mm -hmm. I had to be really mindful to not be waiting. I had to be playing. So we turned waiting moments to playing moments. And I'll tell you, even though I get it, families can be tired and you could think I can't do that right now it was better for me and more enjoyable for me too. Like I wasn't going to board the plane any faster by just standing there and waiting and thinking of how I'm waiting to board. So by playing with my son, he's in a good mood. I'm in a good mood. And we would often be playing as we walk right up to mm -hmm. uh, the gate. And so, yeah, so I hope that helps a little bit. And I, none of this is like all the time, hundred percent of the time, but if we even make a few more of the moments when you're waiting online at the grocery store, that to make those moments that you talk with your children or play with them or play a game. What do you, you know, I spy with my little eye and right. you know, it's, um, it's good for both of you. <laughs> and what about, <clears throat> what about the no, uh, the no words or uh, I think shoulds, right? Is one of the ones that's in there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, so it should, so the no, we kind of talked a little bit about of if you can, try to try to say what is a yes so uh so it's like can i have soda and you know you can have bubbly water <laughs> you know you don't even Make have positive okay yeah, you don't even have to say no right and they'll pick it up you know this, and it's so funny how our children they really are triggered by some of these words so sometimes they don't you know yes i get it some some people are listening going well my child would say no <laughs> i want soda and then you can say, maybe you can have a soda, but not yet. Mm -hmm. You know, we have sodas whenever you do that, you know? Right. So, so just trying to really kind of not take the bait as the parent and find a way to make it a yes, try to find a way to make it later. So the should thing, this one I sort of regret because I, I taught this one to my son too. And you're going to, I know you're going to relate to this and it's so embarrassing. And so anyone listening, um, so adult, there's this phrase you've probably heard that they say, don't should on yourself. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So many of us as adults, we know what that phrase is, is, a, is a play on, right? right? <laughs> Shooting on yourself. Well, my son does not know what that phrase is a play on, but I taught that the concept to him because he would always, I should have done this. I should, I shouldn't have done. And he's very hard on himself, my son. Mm. And so sometimes I'm trying to get him to go the other way. And I, I understand all of our children are different, but he, he gets so anxious, so worried. And he'll say, I shouldn't have done that. I should have, you know, and so I'm trying to talk him out of that. So now I, I taught him, you know, don't should on yourself. And even though he didn't know what the original phrase was, he totally ran with it. He loved this concept. And so he'll catch me sometimes. I might say, uh, you know, Orion, you should clean up those toys because we might trip on them. And he'll say, you're shitting on me, mom. <laughs> and so this is, it's probably the only one that I sort of almost regretted teaching him. But I was like, okay, there's a, there's a. You're shitting on me. I love that. <laughs> Isn't that so funny? So, so what we landed on saying is that we shouldn't should about the past. 
mm. what we can should into the future. And I know that that's not the, the nature of the work really is be in the present, right? Either do it or don't do it. You know, right. do the plan or don't do the plan. Forgive yourself, move on. But, you know, we make plans for the future. So he was shooting so much <laughs> and that we said, okay, we can't shoot. Shooting about the past doesn't make sense because it's, it's gone. Right. But we can make plans for the future. So we can say, oh, how, well, how would we like to do that differently next time? And then for everyone listening, the next step is to not even should into the future. <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> wow, that's great. And what about, I'll try. I love that one. <laughs> Don't shit on yourself. <laughs> well, you're shitting on me. I love that. Um, be careful though. Uh, as yeah, a I have to be careful because she'll pick up on that and then she will. Mine is excellent about um, just delivering it at the right time at, uh, you know, yeah. so anyways, yes. Yeah. So what about I'll try? Yeah, so um, kind of similar to, to some of the other ones we said of, of I think children hear us say that and they so often we don't get to follow through that they it's it's almost like a soft way of saying no but it's almost mm. more frustrating to them they'd almost rather us say no no right so if it's not very likely then you know you might say we're not we we're not going to do that or you know we're not going to do that yet um if it is likely then try to do it now try try to make it happen soon rather than like i'll try to do that later so so just a, a night or two ago uh, we were in our backyard and it, it was during the day and i was sitting in the sun and i said i'll join my son wanted me to join me in the pool i said okay you know give me 10 minutes and i use time a lot i'll say you know one minute five minutes ten minutes and so i said 10 minutes and he said uh how about five and what it made me realize is often when we're outside on a sunny day, I go 10 and then 10 and then 10 and then 10, right? And as like, as long as he stays busy. Right, <laughs> you like, keep I'll going. Try, yeah, I'll try to get in the pool soon, right? Mm -hmm. And so I realized in that exchange, him you know, matching my 10 for a five was like, really mom, like you're gonna or you're not, right? And so I got up and I got in the pool and I said, let's take breaks, so I'll play and then I'll sit and then I'll play and sit. So just to note for a child, what does that sound like? Imagine if every time you asked a spouse or a friend, let's get together, if they said, I'll try or maybe or later, it would feel like you're being put off. And so, yes. yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's huge. I can definitely, um, I'm going to have to, I, I think I do that quite a bit. So I'm going to take your advice on that. So, so bottom line is we're trying to give fewer no's. Is that the trying to switch yeah the use positive language that you know and the the ebook gives all these examples of like replace this for this oh yeah it, it takes some time right but you know just to even be mind truly to be mindful of it and it's not that you know don't be hard on yourself if you're still using those other words but think about if you could replace one no a day if you could replace three no's a day all of that is just adding to a more positive energy for your child and for the two of you and it's contributing to both of your well-being. Right, I, I have I have that little slide up, so I'll read a couple of them. Um, it said, just a couple. It says, instead of social distance, try physical distance. Instead of picky, discerning. Exhausted, recharging. Um, yeah, so I like some of those. Instead of criticism, use the word guidance. So yeah, there's a lot of great words and there's a lo lot of little things that we can be um, saying. So there was one other thing in the a book that I thought would be would go along with this, and I do struggle with this with my daughter because she also has a lot of anxiety and can't always express her feelings, which I think is a problem for a lot of kids. And I think it might even be a problem for me. I don't always have the vocabulary words of like what I'm feeling. Like I don't think we talk about it. But anyways, um, you guys said something about name it to claim it. So yeah, can you share a little bit more or explain that a little bit more? Sure. So this is one of my favorites and uh, the work is, is becoming more and more popular around this area. So, so all of this has some connection to what we call social emotional learning or SEL. So for those of you who have children in school, you might hear the school say we're doing social emotional wellness or social emotional learning. This is related. And uh, you'll see if you go to the site, uh, so not just checking out the ebook, but actually this uh, collective puts together a tip 
uh, weekly. Uh, and so at resiliencenowforparents.org, uh, you can find a weekly tip and it'll just break down one of these strategies. And that's how the ebook came about. They were doing these weekly tips and then they collect, they collected them. So when you go there, uh, you'll see resources. So they give you the tip, but then they recommend, you know, some books, some things you might want to read, little videos. So uh, Dr. Mark Brackett is out of Yale University and he has the book Permission to Feel. And I'm not connected with any of the above. I'm just a fan. I think uh, he okay. does great work. And they have this thing with, called the mood meter that helps you identify what mood you're feeling at any given time. And as you're saying, it's easy to think that you're okay with language, but if you really watch your emotional language throughout the day, many of us are only using a handful of words. So we're like always saying we're stressed, tired, happy, sad, right? We're not really expanding on the range of emotions. So this tip is, uh, so in the, in the ebook, it's related to that work that I just referenced. And it's, um, you wanna notice, name, and navigate. And so the idea is notice how you're feeling, okay. name how you're feeling, and then based on that, navigate the situation, navigate, are you going to tell this to someone? Are you going to take a deep breath to help you get out of that emotion? Or is it a good emotion and you want to stay in it? And so Mark Brackett and others use something called the ruler method. And so you can, you can look this other stuff up if you'd like. And that's in the book as well. We can get graphics or mm -hmm. videos or something. Okay. Exactly. Yep, exactly. And lots of stuff online now related to that work. So this is a sort of, it's, it's related. It's a sort of abbreviated version of that notice name and navigate, which is just be aware of how you're feeling and then put a name to it for yourself and then hopefully to, for others, let other people know what that, what that is you're feeling. And then you can choose a strategy to you know, stay there or to move out of there. So I'll tell you, I was really guilty of saying stressed. I would be happy or stressed, right? Mm -hmm. And there are so Not many, like other, okay. right? I know, and there are so many other emotions in there. And so two quick things. So with my son, uh, not that, so we started using the mood meter at home. So I printed out a copy. And I'll ask, it asks you to say like, how much energy do you have and how much pleasantness? And so you choose your energy and then you choose your pleasantness on a scale and that kind of lands you on a word. So you might not have thought of that word. Oh, I love and, that. And this is something right. we can print out, huh? Yeah, exactly. You can print it. You can have it on, they, they have apps you can put on your phone. And so I started using it with my son at just random times that we would check in on the mood meter. And I purposely did it at like good times, neutral times, hard times. So it wasn't like we were only taking it out when we had a challenge. Right. But we had a little like, you know, we weren't clicking on something. And um, I had us both do the mood meter at that moment. And I came up as sort of apathetic. And it's funny because I joke that I'm hardly ever apathetic. Like I, I'm just like overly, I'm just passionate about a lot of things. But I think it was this combination of like what he had been doing was kind of like frustrating to me. And then he moved into being like sad about it, but I wasn't really quite ready to support him in being sad about it yet. Cause I was still kind of annoyed, but overall I was tired going into the situation. And so all that, you know, we are complex human people, you know, right. came up. And so I was like, that makes sense. I, I was kind of just, overly neutral in this in the situation and he sensed that he wanted me to be more emotionally available mm. but so i said you know this is this is how i feel i think and you know i, I apologize i said i think it's because i'm probably tired from work and this kind this what happened was kind of frustrating for me and so then we used it again uh we, we try to use it somewhat often and he keeps landing on chill he frequently says he's he, you know he does the the energy and the pleasantness and he comes up on chill, so that's fine, that's good. But I, I you know, wanna make sure he's able to be honest with himself and with me. And sometimes it takes time to get there. And so I was trying to give him guidance the other day, but I'm sure it came across as nagging <laughs> and I annoyed him. And so then he stopped what he was doing and I asked him if he wanted to continue and he said, no. And I said, let's do the, let's do the mood meter. And so we did the mood meter and he came up as peeved. <laughs> the word P-E-E-V-E-D. -E -E That's like you hardly ever think of that word peeved. Right. And I said, oh, that makes sense. I said, did I peeve you when I was, you know, giving you guidance on the, and 
He said, yes. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I realized I said, in the future, I'll ask you if you want a tip. You know, I was giving tips and they were unsolicited, right? So I said, I'll try to ask you instead. And then I said, okay, so are you ready to go do this other thing? And he said, no, I'm peeved. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, you know what? This is progress because he's always so careful and anxious that he, I think, is more you know, he'll do what we say, but you know, you don't want your children to just do that. You want them to be right. who they are. So anyways, I hope that. Oh, I love, I really like that because I want to get that for Kaylee because it seems like she's always, she's, she knows the word anxious. So she's always like, I'm anxious, but that's like the only word we know, you know? And it's yes. like, I'm like, you're sad, you're disappointed, you know? And I think sometimes I need help with those words. So I'm excited to try that too, just yes. to see how I'm feeling numb. No. Yes. Good, good, good. <laughs> so Kim, I can't thank you enough. So um, tell us again, the, um, I'll put a link when we post the video, I will put a link um, and share and that would be the awesome. cover of the, of the book, but um, it's really got a lot of great tips and I'll share some of the graphics. So, but thank, thank you so much for sharing with us. And I think. Yeah. The, the sorry, fact that that guess, don't come over here. <laughs> Instead of my son, would be yes, your daughter. But she's not, she's not prepared for the TV. Anyways, but <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate your um, willingness to share and educate us all and share because I think those are some great tips on communication that we all need to, you know, be aware of and take to heart and put into our lives, right? Yes. Awesome. So, thank you for having me. And uh, thank you everyone out there for listening and watching. And it is a free ebook. So please, once you get the link, uh, share it far and wide. We want to help as many families as we can. Thank you.